Hello guys, uh, this is Simon from Successful Freelance Translator and we are starting our next session uh, in SFT group. So let's wait for a couple of minutes so that more people can join us during this live session and uh, we'll start maybe in a, in a minute. So today we are going to discuss such a question as can a translator make a living without translation agencies? Uh, this one, this was one of the questions uh, we received from many translators uh, during a webinar that was conducted last week for a Russian-speaking audience, Russian-speaking translators, and this question was selected through a poll out of more than 100 questions asked by Russian-speaking translators, and I think that. Uh, all other translators uh, are interested in this topic as well. Is it really possible for a freelance translator to make a living without translation agencies? Uh, so we have... Some, I can see already some people joined the session and uh, basically we can start the session. And uh, if you... Uh, if for some reason you cannot watch it live, you can always watch a recap uh, in a videos section on SFT, uh, on SFT group or uh, the next day uh, after this live video session on YouTube channel. So, uh, the biggest spoiler to this question, to this uh, live video session is yes, it is possible to make a living as a freelance translator and to work without translation agencies. Uh, however, you should be ready to change your mindset completely, especially if you are shifting from in-house position to freelancing. Uh, many translators don't like working with translation agencies as they rightfully think that intermediaries crop a big part of their income. In any case, we shouldn't forget that agencies, they take many obligations to let you focus on translation solely. So, if you are not ready to assume new obligations and to spend more time for marketing, for promotion, for administrative tasks and other related activities, uh, you should think twice before breaking all connections with agencies. Uh, probably it will be easier for you to continue working with agencies and uh, not to spend time for other uh, marketing and promotion uh, things. So, uh, the main thing you should do to make a living as an independent translator is to learn how to be an entrepreneur. If you think that you can delegate most part of marketing and promotion uh, activities to outsource specialists, that's true. But, but it doesn't mean that you don't, don't need to know how things work in a business. Moreover, there is a common dilemma, especially in the beginning. Professional services cost a lot. And if you hire a mediocre provider uh, to perform some functions that you cannot or uh, don't want to perform on your own, you can expect only mediocre results. That's why you should take business courses to be able to implement certain activities into your business on your own, on your own at, at least uh, when you are starting out uh, and maybe uh, in the first couple of months when you, when you started working with uh, direct clients and quit translation agencies. Uh, sometime later, when you will have a sufficient budget, and you will have sufficient budget uh, in some time to hire better specialists, and uh, when you have relevant knowledge to understand uh, if, if the outsourced specialist is good enough for you or not, then you can hire a, a specialist and outsource some part of your, of your daily business activities to another guy or another girl who will be able to help you. So, to run a successful business as an independent translator and to quit working with translation agencies, I recommend to pass the following courses. Uh, a course on local taxation system, a course maybe on uh, uh, labor legislation active in your country, and uh, some civil laws for businesses. Also, take a course on business management and finance, and a course on marketing. These courses will provide a firm basis uh, for consequent development of your translation business. Uh, business model. After that, you shall develop a system. In, in, in other words, a business model that will co cover all aspects starting from uh, the assets you need to run a business, I mean uh, physical assets like uh, an office maybe or uh, 
an office e equipment or, or uh, software or software assets like CAD tools, maybe PDF editors, uh, readers, scanners and so on. Uh, and ending with the methods applied to uh, initiate repeated sales. I have prepared a detailed post about business model for freelance translators on SFT blog. Uh, you will find a link uh, in the comments to this section, or to this video, sorry. Uh, then, then you should also create a customer avatar or a customer profile. You should clearly define who your customers are, whether they or whether they need your services, or uh, where they live, what do they produce or what kind of services they offer to their clients. So you should clearly understand what, who your clients are, what they do, how you can connect with them. So this part is the most important. You need to understand what kind of channels you need to communicate with them. Uh, these channels can be either a website or maybe a phone calls or even exhibitions, industry related exhibitions and so on. You can find some guidance on customer avatar in my webinar. Uh, it was called content marketing for freelance translators and you will also find a link to this webinar below this video in, in the comments when uh, this live session is ended, when it comes to end. so. Uh, when you have defined a customer avatar, you need to define your services. When the clients, uh, so providing translation or is not enough when you work with the direct clients as a self-employed specialist. It is, it is okay when you work with translation agencies, but your clients, your direct clients will want more than just a translation. Uh, consider providing a turnkey service, a turnkey service. I mean, you can uh, cooperate with an editor uh, to provide proofreading and uh, literary or technical editing for your translations like I do. I work uh, in cooperation with my wife. She is a Russian editor, so she always proofread and edit my translations uh, so, so that we can uh, provide an end product to a client. You can also hire a desktop publishing specialist to deal with formatting. Uh, for instance, if PDF files or scanned files or some uh, files in uh, in uh, design formats like InDesign or Photoshop, um, or even you can team up with a web developer to work on website localization projects. So you can provide a full range of translation and translation related services to your clients. So just think of an additional services that can add value to your clients. The next thing is specialization. Speaking of uh, customer avatar and your services, you should also remember about specialization. It is one of the most important things when you work independently. Uh, it is impossible to offer all kind of translations to everyone. When you do everything for everyone, it says to your potential clients that you are good for nothing. For example, I offer translation services only in a limited set of subject fields like legal, technical, and uh, marketing translations. I never w work with medicine or biology or some complex uh, financial documents and uh, similar things. I also have limitations even within legal and technical fields. I have substantial experience in the sphere of geology and mining since I've been working in a mining company for almost four years. And I continued working with other mining companies after I uh, left in the position. But I only deal with mining of coal, gold, silver and rare earth elements. And I have little experience with oil and gas, so I don't take don't take those tasks, uh, those translation projects related to oil and gas. The next thing, uh, channels to reach new new customers. During creation of a customer avatar, you can make an assumption about channels to be used to, to reach out to your potential customers. Uh, one and the same channel may work perfectly with one client, client and uh, be completely useless with other clients. For instance, you can easily connect with a travel agency or travel company on Instagram or Facebook, but you will hardly get any response from an equipment manufacturer on the same platforms. Uh, some, in some fields, people tend to hire independent specialists only by recommendation of their colleagues or other companies in their field. 
So if you are not sure which channel works best, and actually in many cases you won't be sure and it will be hard to predict which channel, which communication channel works best, you should test several channels to find a perfect one, the, the perfect one. In time, when you have a customer profile, when you have a business model in place, when you decide on specialization, you will find the right communication channels through these uh, experiments and establish further contacts with similar clients will be much much easier and uh, the further communication will run smoother. The idea here is to continue testing various channels until you find the right one to reach the right customer. And that's the main problem of marketing, actually. There is no, no a universal, uh, a one-fits-all success formula. There are only common practices you can apply to, di to discover and to create your own formula that will work exactly for your business. And uh, finally, let's talk about demand. Uh, talking about the work without translation agencies, I have to focus on this question. Do companies and maybe individuals want to work with independent translators? Uh, it's a common misconception that companies or individuals prefer to work with companies only. Ultimately, we all work with people, not companies. And a translator can offer a unique, personalized, first-hand services, first-hand experience that translation agencies will never be able to deliver. So everything depends on how well you can present yourself and sell your services. I work with various clients, various direct clients, uh, physical and legal entities, governmental and international organizations, and they are accepting the fact that I am a self-employed translator, and moreover, they prefer to work with me instead of translation agencies. Some interesting examples, like cases from my career, from, uh, from my experience. Last summer I translated an acting handbook for a private acting coach. Uh, a couple of weeks ago I have translated a package of archive, personal archive documents for a genealogist from the UK. Uh, he has been creating a family tree and he needs some old Russian registration documents issued in the beginning of the 20th century to be translated into English. Also, experts working with international organizations like Asian Development Bank, European Bank of Reconstruction and Development, uh, UNDP local mission in, in the Kyrgyz Republic and Bishkek in particular, they, fi they find me and they have been founding me via my local website uh, and hiring me for, for their interpreting work and interpreting and translation. And actually, I had a really interesting and cool project they, that included both translation, interpreting, and some even consulting work uh, for interviews and meetings. Uh, the last project was conducted by a, a U.S. professor who studied the issues of uh, radicalization in Central Asia, and uh, we have met we have met with six or seven uh, representatives of governmental agencies to learn more about local regulations and activities conducted to mitigate re religious radicalization in particular and it was really interesting for me to take part in this project. Uh, another great example, two years ago um, two architects from Switzerland asked me to schedule several meetings with directors of local institutions uh, to make a tour around uh, buildings uh, constructed in, the, in Bishkek during the Soviet times. They were very interested in Soviet architecture and uh, I did everything from finding contacts to scheduling meetings and interpreting uh, during these tours uh, around such, such buildings. So when it, it's a great example of uh, direct communication uh, with direct clients. So when direct clients get a perfect translation from you, uh, and especially when they compare their previous experience of working with a super duper translation agency uh, that works with 1000 uh, language directions and have 100,000 translators in their pool and then they, when they come to you and understand that you can actually provide better services they will turn to you again and again and you will become their preferred uh, service provider and it's quite possible so companies and individuals 
are ready to work with independent translators, and many of them understand the benefits of working without intermediaries. All you need is to treat your freelance translation business like a real business. You should make plans, you should implement your plans, you should measure the work you, the progress you have achieved, uh, and to run and to do the same thing, things that that big businesses do. And this way you can achieve the same results as translation agencies and uh, even even better results, the results that translation agencies uh, have while working with direct clients. And uh, last but not least, when you have all the things in place, uh, you need to register and to keep records of all your new clients and uh, deals, uh, even of those clients and deals that have contacted you or you have contacted with, but for some reasons you couldn't win the, a deal. So this information will be helpful to track your progress, to run uh, SWOT analysis and to facilitate repeated sales uh, for, from, you, from new clients through follow-ups, remarketing methods and so on. So actually you when you have all this implemented you need to have a crm like client relationship management software or to be integrated into your business so currently i i finally found uh, a crm system that perfectly fits my fits my needs and uh, it, it it's actually a russian based rush uh, russian based crm system so russian programmers developed it it, it also has uh, english version but I'm still testing it. Uh, it is called Bitrix24. Um, you can check it out if you'd like. But it works really good for me, especially for my local business and for the Russian version of website that I have launched recently. This uh, combines all channels, all communication channels like Facebook, uh, like uh, web chats on websites and your email addresses your inboxes from all possible inboxes into one single system so when you receive uh, a new uh, translation request uh, through through uh, through some of these channels from one channel or through another channel uh, it automatically creates a kind of lead and you can uh, work on this lead uh, inside the system you don't need to check uh, every every page you have, every channel you have, every inbox you have, everything is in one place. It's uh, really really useful system, so you can check it out. Uh, there are also other uh, free and paid uh, CRM systems like HubSpot and so on. So if you if you want to make a real business, you you should actually use a CRM system. So. That's actually all that I wanted to say regarding today's topic. Uh, you can leave your questions below this video. I will provide my answers to those questions uh, at the end when, when this live video session is over. Also, do not forget to put likes if you like this, uh, this session in particular. Subscribe to my Twitter account. I will leave a link below. And also subscribe to SFT YouTube channel. We, al we already have 200 subscribers and uh, and the number is growing uh, in addition if you want to work with direct clients i have created a special guide how to find direct clients online you can purchase it from sft website i will also leave a link to this guide under this video uh, thanks a lot for watching i hope you like this video session and uh, see you uh, during the next session i hope it will be on friday next week but if i if I have too much work, maybe I'll reschedule in a, in a week or so. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Have a nice day. Have a nice evening for someone. It's already an evening. And bye-bye.